Hello, good morning class. Good morning my technology and livelihood education students. Organic agriculture production in C2. This is your Sir Bastol. Our lesson for today is about vermiculture or vermicomposting. This is very important and you can use this project for your gardening at home. And also one requirement in order to pass this uh, subject. Alright, let's begin. Please take note, African night crawler. This is the type of earthworm that we are going to use for this project. Right, a little information. African night crawler is an earthworm species native to tropical West Africa. And now it's in the Philippines no? for vermicomposting projects. Alright, for the materials, we're going to collect carbon sources materials and also nitrogen source materials. And also we can use your concoctions. And of course we need African night crawler. For concoction use, we can use it's either indigenous microorganism, fish amino acid, fermented plant juice, or fermented fruit juice. We're going to dilute this uh, in, in one liter of water, at least two uh, tablespoonful, right? And then we're going to apply this to our substrate. The purpose of this concoction is to induce microorganism. To the substrate so that uh, we can produce compost material in in a shorter time for animal manure this includes rabbit horse cow and chicken pop right these are the sources of carbon for nitrogen source of material we can use like your mongo beans waste material, your string beans waste material, madre de cacao leaves, apple apple leaves, grasses. Substrate is a material where we're going to grow and produce our African night crawler. And that substrate is the food for this earthworm and convert that substrate into vermicompost or vermicasts by eating all this substrate. Alright, for the ratio, we need 70% of carbon materials and we need 30% of nitrogen material to get 100% of substrate mixtures. Alright, and now for every 100 kilograms of substrate, we're going to put one kilogram of worm, the African night crawler. And every layer of piling up the substrate, we're going to, with every material, using water with concoctions. So in every liter of water, we're going to put two tablespoonful of concoctions. Now take note how to pile up, okay, how to prepare your, your substrate. In this regard, we're going to use the sandwich method. Right, in first layer, for example, we can put first the carbon source material. And then on top of the carbon source material, we're going to put the nitrogen source material. And then on the top of the nitrogen source material, we can put again the carbon source material, so on and so forth. Alright, please take a look of the examples of the vermibin and the vermibed structures. You can use this as an example or reference of making your own vermibed at home. All right, after mixing or piling up your substrate, what you're going to do is to cover it at least in 
seven days to ten days composting of the substrate without air and we call it anaerobic decomposition after seven days or ten days time then we're going to remove the cover and we call it aerobic decomposition or composting with air and wait until such time that the substrate all will become casts right these are the very important maintenance practices in vermicomposting number one maintain a humidity of at least 80 percent now how to determine this 80 percent humidity take fistful of substrate below squeeze it there must be five to seven drops of water right and this indicates about 80 percent humidity secondly you need to protect the worms from natural predators like birds chickens frogs mice snakes and you know even pigs love to eat worms and the worst is take a look ants do not eat worms but they can kill your whole population of worms if you left unattended the third maintenance practice is shade the worms from direct sunlight so it's good to note that uh, your vermi beds must have shade now in order to protect your worms from direct sunlight you know your worms do not have skin and they cannot uh, withstand to direct sunlight right so for harvest and application you can harvest your vermi compost depending on your needs and then you can use this as solid organic fertilizer applied basally by incorporating in a soil prior to planting or transplanting and being absorbed by the plants through the root system your vermicast also can be converted into foliar fertilizer or liquid fertilizer we have a separate uh, lesson for this it is sprayed to the plants particularly on the leaves which are absorbed through stomata the good timing for application is early in the morning or late in the afternoon the weather must be good there must be no rain or the weather must not be windy vermicast is also be used as one ingredient for your potting mix right so this potting mix is a good business you can use uh, this as a potting mix uh, you can uh, combine with one part of garden soil and one part of carbonized rice hull and also one part of vermicast no so ratio is one is to one is to one right that is the ratio for potting mix right and so this uh, potting medium can also be used for seedling trays or to germinate seeds or to produce uh, seedlings for transplanting right after harvest uh, we're going to preserve of course the casts right or your organic fertilizer so how to do this just store in a dry dark and cold place right Packaging materials should be in line with the plastic bag, right? If your cast, you converted that already for a foliar spray or liquid fertilizer, when aging, just add molasses to prolong shelf life, right? So thank you very much. God bless. And I hope that these lessons meant a lot to you. Bye-bye.